Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe was born in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, November 15, 1887. O'Keeffe showed an early interest in art. She just loved art. When Georgia was a little older, she attended the Art Institute in Chicago and later the Art Students League in New York City. At the Art Students League in New York, Georgia O'Keeffe honed her skills and experimented with all kinds of different art forms and practices. In the 1910s, Georgia O'Keeffe's career started to take off. She had several different exhibitions and she started showing her work. Georgia worked for seven decades. That is 70 years. What really started getting Georgia her attention, she would take a flower and she would zoom in really, really, really close. And then she would do these massive, beautiful paintings, really close ups of flowers and other plant life. And she started to get a lot of attention for this work. Georgia O'Keeffe became one of the leading figures in American modernism. In 1929, Georgia visited New Mexico, and that became an experience that really changed her life and her artwork. She looked at the stark landscapes and the different colors of the rocks, the places around her, and it started to change the way she did art to depict the beauty of the American Southwest. Not only did Georgia paint flowers and other plant life, she also did cityscapes. She loved skulls and other abstract forms. Now, Georgia O'Keeffe was kind of reclusive. That meant she liked to be by herself. And so she became known for staying kind of in her own place, doing her own artwork. Georgia liked to stay at her home and studio in New Mexico and just create and create and create. So Georgia O'Keeffe is celebrated not only because she had beautiful technical skills, but also because she brought a feminine perspective to art at the time, to modern art. Georgia loved to celebrate nature's beauty. And you can see that in her artwork. In 1986, Georgia passed away at the age of 98. She lived a long, good life and she contributed amazing things to the world of art. And now for some inspiration. Georgia said, I've been absolutely terrified every moment of my life and I've never let it keep me from a single thing that I wanted to do. My painting is what I have to give back to the world for what the world gives to me. I know now that most people are so closely concerned with themselves that they are not aware of their own individuality. I can see myself and it has helped me to say what I want to say in paint. And lastly, in a way, nobody sees a flower really. It is so small. We haven't time and to see takes time. Like to have a friend takes time. And now for the project. So what I want you to do is go get some watercolor paper. You can do big sheets of paper or smaller. It's up to you. So we laid out our paper and Georgia was known for bright, vibrant colors and patterns. So I want you to make sure that you, you look at your paint and when you're using watercolor, make sure that you clean your brush before you get a different color of paint so that it doesn't get muddied and brown with other paints in it. So we laid out our watercolor paper. I put different things on the table that my kids could choose from. There was a pineapple, a succulent, flowers, and bananas. So my kids all chose something that they wanted to do. You put the water in your paints to kind of wake them up and get them ready to paint. Each of my children chose a different subject. Some of them really stuck closely to their subject, like my daughter uh, with the succulent and my son with the bananas. The other three just did what they wanted to do. I chose to, to take one of our orange flowers and I really looked closely at it and I just really tried to get the lines and the patterns that the, some of the petals were making. Not all of the petals, just some of them. And I wanted to see the difference between the darker red and the bright yellows and the oranges and all of the shades in between. So now I'll show you what we did. This is what I did, my finished product. And you can't really tell that it's a flower necessarily, but I'm happy with the way that it turned out because I can see the edges of the flowers were not perfectly straight. They had some wave to them, some variation. And I just love the way that the colors play together and splash together. I like that there's some red and it melds, it goes into the orange and the yellow. My daughter decided to do a succulent and I love how soft and serene this feels. She started with one petal and then it did more on the outsides. And I feel like it's a beautiful representation of how Georgia O'Keeffe would have looked at a subject. 
painting it simply but beautifully with bright colors and distinct lines. One of my sons chose to do bananas and I thought he did a great job. He was concerned with trying to get all of the colors right. And I love that his bananas are bright and they're a beautiful representation of bananas. He did excellent. Another son did this and it was so fun watching him just experiment with the way he would put some water and color here and then he would pick up the page and watch it drip down a little bit. And he used his paintbrush here and there and he splattered some here and there. So he was really feeling it. His work shows me that he has joy when he creates something. And I want you to make sure that you are creating with joy, that it comes from a place that makes you feel happy. That's what art should be, is something that makes you feel happy. So I have two from one of my sons because he started out and he was so excited about putting lots of water on and lots of colors and they started to come together. And if you'll notice, this is interesting, if you want to make brown, you mix a bunch of colors together. And he looked at the end result and he thought that he did not love that it made so much brown. And also, here's a warning with watercolor paper. If you get too much water on it and you work it too much, some of the fibers will pick up and that I think is what you're seeing down here in these brown speckles. Now, that being said, I still think there are some beautiful things that happened with his work. There's still some fun bursts of color and parts around here where like this little sunburst, I love this, but some things that are working really well and beautiful. But he decided that that wasn't exactly his goal and so he wanted to do another painting. So he did this painting on a documentary, I think about Africa. And he said there was a bright orange part in it and there were some these beautiful leaves. And so he, he was much happier with this because some of the colors did not turn into brown and he didn't work the paper so much that it started to come apart. Both of his paintings have merit. And lastly, I have my youngest. He liked doing the pure colors and he would paint a little bit here and there and I feel like this is a beautiful painting done by a young child and I'm excited to keep it and show it to him when he's older. Art element of the day. Today we're going to be talking about value. Value is essential. It might be one of the most important things that an artist can master that will change his paintings from something very amateur to something more professional. Value is how light or dark something is on a scale from white to black. White is the highest value and black is the lowest value. So many times an artist will have a gray scale that they have and it's usually cut into nine or 10. We're gonna talk about nine right now, nine or 10 squares where black is the darkest and white is the very lightest. White would be say number one and black would be number nine. And everything in the middle has a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And once you get those values perfected, you can start to really understand and be able to paint the essence of a picture. One way to go about this is to make sure that when you begin a picture, you establish your lightest light. If this part has to be pure white, make that pure white. And if there's a really dark section, like maybe it's as dark as a nine, or maybe as dark as an eight, if that's the darkest you go, put that in there so that you know between those two sections, you need to paint the rest of your picture within those parameters. There was a painting I did when I was in college and I thought it was beautiful. But when I showed my teacher, he said, wait, your darkest dark is not correct in here. He took some paint and he put a dark color on there that was closer to an eight or a nine because I hadn't established the lightest light and the darkest dark everything else in there was kind of just in the middle and it was a bland painting. And so I changed it. I went in there and I put my darkest dark in and I put my lightest light in and suddenly my painting had depth and interest and excitement because the contrast was there. In many of Monet's paintings, he will have a light region 
and a dark region and then he will fill in. Here is the light tone, here is the dark tone and everything else fits in between those parameters. You have a picture that now has actual depth that looks realistic because there are dark things and there are light things. Thank you for joining me today at Homeschool Art to learn about Georgia O'Keeffe and her incredible contribution to the art world. Please like and subscribe, share with your other friends so that they can enjoy this channel as well. Bye.